Are you looking to upgrade your editing software? Well, let me show you how you can get a free 90 day trial of Final Cut Pro, as well as a quick overview of the layout of the program and some initial setup tips to quickly get you set up to edit your videos. Hey everyone, Camber here showing you how to use your camera to make good videos. So if you're new, consider subscribing and also joining my private Facebook group where I can better answer your filmmaking questions. And I've been using Final Cut Pro for many years now. And if you're coming from iMovie, it's a simple upgrade. But even if you're coming from a different program, Final Cut Pro is really user friendly and easy to learn, which is one of the reasons I really like it. But to get your free trial, just head on over to Apple's Final Cut Pro trial page that I have linked in the description. Click the download button and you'll be able to use the program free for 90 days to see if you like it. And this is a really great deal because this program costs $300 and so you get three months, which is plenty of time to see if you like the program and if it works for you. And $300 may seem like a lot, but when you compare that to Adobe's Premiere Pro, that's on a subscription basis of I think around $20 a month. So after about 15 months, the programs cost the same price and past that, Final Cut Pro is cheaper because you're done paying for it where you have to keep paying for Adobe. But now that you have it downloaded, let's jump into the program and see how it works and get you set up for editing. So when you first open Final Cut Pro, this is what it looks like. And before I go into what all these different areas mean, let's first come up to Final Cut Pro then click on Preferences. And we're gonna leave everything the same except right here on Color Correction. I'm gonna switch that to Color Wheels and that'll make some editing things easier down the line. But for Import, wanna make sure that you have this Copy to Library Storage location checked. Because if you have leave files in place, then basically what the program is doing is it's looking at the files on your computer and then using that to edit in the program, which is fine. But if you move those files somewhere else, then the computer is not going to know where they are and you're going to get errors saying it can't find your video. So when you hit copy to library stores location, what happens is that it makes a copy into its own Final Cut Pro library. So no matter what you do with the originals, you'll be fine. I typically take the originals and put it on an external hard drive at that point so that I have a copy on my computer in my Final Cut library and then also my original somewhere else. And that way you have backups of your footage. In this first column here, we have a library. I'll just call this first video. And then this right here is an event. I'll just say today and I'll go into more depth on a different video on how to use these libraries, events and projects in order to keep everything organized and make your workflow go smoother. But for now, I'm just going to show you some generals on how to make this work. So I'm going to click on import media. Yes. Allow it to access files. And then you just navigate to where your video file is. I'll import that. Next up, I need to create a project so you can click here, new project, and I'll just make this test. And when you do this, you can hit custom settings and depending on what you want, 1080, 4K, you can go through all those with resolutions, frame rates. I'm just gonna leave it as is in 1080 for now. So then you have your timeline down here for your videos. You're able to move this so that your video will look larger while you're editing. And then you take your video that you want, drag it down into the timeline, and then you can play your video. And then over in this area is where you have all your controls for effects, for editing. You have the color wheels that we looked at earlier so that you can change all kinds of exposure and colors on your videos. You can do sound editing and you can just look at the info. This is a 4K clip, but it's in a 1080p timeline. So a few more things to look at to get you started. This right here changes how much space it takes up. These change whether you see just the video, how much audio is in there. I usually keep it around here unless I'm actually editing the audio. I like to go there. This one changes how large it is. So now let's bring in one more clip here. Just to show a few other things. And once you have your clips in there, you can grab the edge like this and move it around to choose where you want the start and stop points to be on your clips. And it shows on each one what it'll look like with both of the clips together up in the middle screen. And up here in the edit tab, you have all kinds of copy, cut, paste options with the shortcuts that go with those as well as for trimming and quick ways to edit your clips. So now let's look at a few more functions. This one right here turns audio skimming on and off. So when you're going through, if it's on, 
You'll hear the audio from the clips. I like to leave it off because it's just distracting to me. This one here turns video skimming on or off. So now when I move around, it doesn't go through the videos. I like that on so I can find the point that I want when I'm editing. And this is snapping. So for example, if I had this here and I wanted to take this clip and bring it up, it'll automatically snap it into place so that those will line up. Otherwise, if it's off, it doesn't do it on its own. You gotta make sure you get it exactly where you want. I usually keep that on because I like how it puts everything together really quickly for me. This one right here, you click on and it shows different effects that you can use for your clips and all you have to do is grab those and drag it over top and it puts those effects on. And then this one next to it is the transition browser. So for example, if you wanted to cross dissolve, you throw that on there and as it goes through, it does a transition for you. So that's the layout of Final Cut Pro as well as some of the basic functions of the program to get you started editing your videos. And I'm gonna have a lot more tutorials on Final Cut Pro coming, showing you how to do some really cool stuff in the program so you can really up your editing game. But if you have any questions about what we did here today, then feel free to leave them down in the comments. I'll try to clarify anything I can. And if this video is helpful, then please help me out by leaving a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you soon.